Obsidian power users are literally tracking their games like that. And it's not as hard as you think. You get a clear overview of your gaming collection, what you still want to play, or just track your gaming experiences. No coding is required, so just follow along for the next six minutes and learn a few things along the way. Okay, so let's first just create a new vault and call it Game Tracker Demo Vault. And I'm gonna pick a location and hit create. And now inside our new vault, I'm gonna close the graph view and delete the welcome note. So the biggest wall everyone faces is just creating detailed notes for each of their games. Like if your notes don't contain much info, making this game view is like trying to build a house without a foundation. But what if I told you that there's a way that saves you hours of manual entry? Simply go to the Obsidian settings, go to community plugins, Turn them on if you haven't already, click on Browse, and then search for the awesome Media DB plugin by Moritz Young. Click on Install, and then on Enable. And what this plugin basically does is it lets you import game notes. So let's actually import some games. So if you've correctly installed MediaDB, this icon should appear in the left ribbon menu. And now click either Command P or if you're on Windows, Control P to open the Command palette. And in here, just type in Game. This should immediately pop up the most important command for you, which is MediaDB, create MediaDB entry game. So click on that. And now you're gonna see that MediaDB offers you to search its database and use all the APIs that have something to do with game. So we're actually gonna imagine some game that we wanna search. And I'm just gonna search for Shellshock Live, hit enter. And now we actually see that it offers us our game that we searched. But very important to note, out of the box, if you install MediaDB, it will only let you search for Steam games. So for example, Minecraft is not a game that you can find on Steam. We will fix this later in the video, but for now, just to import some sample games, I would stick with just Steam games. So let's click on Shellshock Live, hit OK, then it's going to show us a preview of the node. And yeah, we can see that it already has a lot of very useful pre-filled properties, especially the one where it says played equals false or personal rating equals zero. We can use these later. Let's hit OK. And now we see that MediaDB has created a MediaDB folder and a subfolder called games and Shellshock Life is a node within this folder. If you want MediaDB to put these things somewhere else, just go to the settings and then on the left side, click on MediaDB Scroll a bit further down and you see the new file location is pre-configured here. For example, I actually don't want MediaDB, I just want a games folder. So I'm gonna just do it like that and close this up. I'm also gonna correct that here. And now I'm gonna import another game, just shapes and beats. Hit enter, I found it and I hit okay and okay. And now I've imported another game and it's immediately in our games folder. At this point, our gaming notes are still pretty useless, of course. In order to get that visual clarity about our games, we gotta build that game tracker. So for that, let's right click the file menu and click on new base. Let's rename our base to game tracker. And as you can see, like by default, a base literally just displays all the files in your vault. So if I add just another file and go in our game tracker, you can see that it displays itself, also the untitled and the game notes, which is obviously not what we want. So let's narrow down our search with filters. Go to the top right and click on filter. And now we can establish for this view, all the following are true, where, not file, but folder is, and now games. And immediately our search is narrowed down. But how do we actually display these things in a manner that shows their covers and just looks a lot cooler? That we can change if we go to the top left because right now we're still in a table view. So just extend this view and I'm just gonna call it to play and change its layout to cards. Now cards gives us more options, which is one, the card size, but even more importantly, the image property. So let's click on the image property and find like in our gaming notes, there is going to be a property for the image. There it is. It's literally called image. And now as we can see, the images don't really fit because we got to adjust the aspect ratio. So again, extend the view and an image fit of cover is actually good, but let's just change the aspect ratio. That's actually wrong to something like, yeah, 0 0.45. Okay, actually let's also increase the card size a bit more. And that actually looks really good. But because this is the view we called to play, we only wanna display games 
where the property, so if I click on one of these games, where the property played is actually still unchecked. So I know you probably know what we gotta do already, which is click on filter and add another filter and say played is false, like that. And now if we go into one of these games and say, all right, we already played slash beaten it, you know, and we click on this and our game tracker doesn't show it anymore. But of course, now we want the second view, which is what we already have beaten. So let's extend our view and click on the three dots and click on duplicate view. Now we're gonna call this beaten. And in our beaten view, we're gonna click on filters again. So just for reference, like we can now switch between these views and these are going to have their own filters. So in beaten, we click on filter and then played is, and then just checked. Now, if we look into our two play view, we have just shapes and beats, which we haven't beaten yet because that game is freaking hard. And then we also have beaten, which is shell shock because I'm more than level 80 in that game. And that is basically, you have the nuke then, you know, then, then you have beaten the game, in my opinion. Okay, I've actually imported more games, which is something you could do as well. Also mind that you can obviously add other properties to display. So for example, in my beaten games, I also want their rating I gave them to be displayed. So I'm going to click on the top right on properties and then played like showing that is kind of useless, but definitely the personal rating, for example, the 10 for super hot or for Shellshock Live, I'm going to give it a nine. So that is pretty cool. And of course, if you don't want a title to be shown, you can also just put that away. Uh, you can also hide that property. Yeah, and things can obviously also be grouped or sorted because Obsidian bases are amazing. For example, we can group things by publisher. And now we can see that, for example, Hades is actually by the same publisher. Okay, there's one major problem we still need to fix. I'd really like to add Minecraft to the tracker with the same detailed properties as all the other nodes as well. But we can't really do that until we do one more thing. So for this, we're actually going to go back into the settings of MediaDB and we're gonna see that there are some API keys that we can actually enter. So API keys, if you don't know what they are, are basically your access or credentials to access some library, some databases. And in order to import things like Minecraft, you are going to need the OMDB API key, which you can easily get online. So just click the first link in the description, which is the link to the omdbapi.com slash API key dot ASPX, click enter. And this site is basically all you need. You're gonna click on free, and then you're just going to add your information and email, actually do it with an email you have access to. So here, my email at email.com, Carlos Obsidian Tutorials, my Obsidian Vault is the use. Then just submit the entire thing. So you should find this mail and they're going to give you, here's your key. First, you have to click this at the bottom to activate it in the first place. And you know, then just copy your key. And then back in the MediaDB settings, just paste this key. Again, don't forget to click this activation link, otherwise it won't work. And now after you've added that, if you now hit Command P and again search for game and then have game tick like there, and we're gonna search for Minecraft. This time we see Minecraft 2009 game from OMDB API, not from Steam API. So now we can actually add basically everything. Click OK. Now it's added within our games folder. Of course, we only scratched the surface of what you could actually build yourself with Obsidian Bases. If you want to take the coolest travel notes ever, check out this video and literally double what you learned about bases today in just nine minutes. Thanks for watching.